All right, you know what? We're just going to move Most along. Most intriguing It is player. time to move ahead. What are we on, Mara? What are we on? <laughs> Go ahead. Number four. Ah, number four. The natural Jackson Smith in Jigba as we come down the home stretch here. He is the fourth most intriguing Seahawk. Highest skill position player they've ever drafted. This group. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah, Bruce and Russell, Okun. Yeah. Earl. Yeah. Witherspoon. Yeah. The only guys they've ever drafted higher than him at number 20 did not play skill position. And Offensive so skill. Yep. yep. You're yep. talking about a guy that they see something in that is you know, different from anybody else they've drafted in the first round. He's been unbelievably productive, unbelievably instinctive, and a technician. And I think that combination of all three of those elements are why he is the number one wide receiver picked in this draft. Don't sleep on that. Now, there weren't guys picked in the top five this year, but he was the first wide receiver. They had their choice of any receiver in the draft. And there were some other guys they liked a lot. The kid out of BC was yeah, certainly who went right on that after list. him. Zay Flowers to Baltimore, who, by the way, is doing what Jackson's doing. He is making a strong early impression. Looked really, really good to start off his career in Baltimore. So they chose Jackson Smith and Jig, but why? Because of the combination, the ability to be instinctive, to just know where to be in a football field to have some of that technique down already in college and some of that I think is the training they get at Ohio State and then finally the productivity even on a team that inclu included Alave and Garrett Wilson he was the most productive receiver on that team which says something so put all of that together and you've got somebody who's going to immediately slide in as your slot receiver and play with a group that was already one of the better tandems in the NFL so he's looked like a starter right off the bat. Mm -hmm. He is, uh, you know, a breath of fresh air to talk to, to see, to be around, etc. You put it all together, and yeah, he probably would have been on this list in the top five anyway, just by virtue of being a first-round pick. But there is something about Jackson Smith and Jigba that's even more intriguing than that. You asked a good question yesterday. Had they not had the number five pick where they could address Devin Witherspoon and get a defensive guy and difference maker and someone they felt was truly unique uh, at his position in the secondary, they just had pick 20. Would they have taken Jackson there? If the rest of the picks, one through 19, fall in the draft and Detroit takes Witherspoon at six and the rest of the draft kind of falls away, it does. I think the answer is yes. I think the answer is yes. The only question is, would they have traded up or something if that had been the case to try to do it differently? But I think you're right. If they were making a selection at 20 and everything else fell the mm -hmm. way it did, yeah, I think they absolutely take Jackson Smith and Jake. Here's the other crazy thing. There's two other areas of this that jump out to me. Number one, when you hear Gino say what Pete has said, which is, dude's just natural. right? Just, I, I bet you put him on a racquetball court. I bet you put him in anything. So maybe a sport he's never even done. He could go play in the cricket fields. I bet you he could be just fine. Like just naturally coordinated, athletic, balance, like whatever it is. I'll just jump in and, and I can do whatever. Um, so that A jumps out. B, had he been a 4-4 four, four guy? People always say, oh, the 40 doesn't matter, 40 doesn't matter. Had he been a healthy hamstring and had he run like 4-4-2 four, four, at the combine? Remember, he didn't run at the combine. He just ran at his pro day, and he wasn't even going to run then, but he's finally like, screw it. I'm going to compete. Like, they need to see me run. And that was really put the Seahawks over the top as well. Like, Because what did he that. run? 4-5? Yeah, he's a 4-5 guy. I think he's just, you know, there's 4-2 guys, there's 4-4 four, four guys, then there's 4-5, four, 4-6 four, guys, and then there's 4-9 guys. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah so you kind of got it all. Had he been like a low 4-4, four, four, he's a top 10 pick. Hey, speaking of which, how come you didn't ask Gino your question? Which you one? had it right here, written down. What, which one? Who wins in a race? You were Bobo. Oh, I, yeah, darn it. Didn't you chickened out. Yeah, I just didn't feel that. <laughs> I wasn't feeling that through the process. Here's the one question about Jackson Smith and Jigba, because I, I have very little doubt about his ability on the field. I don't know that I've ever felt more confident in a rookie being able to contribute right away and have success. Honestly, I believe it. Mm. There's nothing about him on the field that concerns me even a little, other than health, which health. I guess is true of anybody. But in terms of his ability once he's out there, I, I don't have a single concern. His hands are amazing. His feel is tremendous. His ability to get open, all of it. Yeah. The only question about Jackson Smith and Jigba is they went offense with that pick when their need was defense. And they went offense away from the middle of the field. They went with a skill position when they probably had a bigger need in the middle. 
up front, offensive line, mm-hmm. etc. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying he's the wrong pick mm-hmm. because I'm really excited about him. But if you're searching for question marks on a guy that really is about as sure thing as you could get, yeah. that would be the yeah, one. Yeah, well, there was not a... Who have been some of the the centers over the year? The kid out of Alabama that they wanted right there at 20. They got taken at 18. Mitch Morris out of Missouri guy they like. There just wasn't that that guy in this draft. John Michael Schmitz was second round. I think he's going to be a good player, not an athletic guy in this system, but a good player. So there wasn't that. And there was number one receiver on the board. And we're going to go out and we're going to take him. I do think as well, and this is just my own opinion and perception, I think having Tyler Lockett in this building for a decade made this decision easier too, because there's a lot of similarity in skill set, in body type, in movement, right, in just feel like, oh yeah, yeah. There's a lot of Tyler in this guy. A little more production, more skilled, reached his ceiling a little higher than you know at Ohio State receiver than Kansas State at that time, Bill Snyder. So there's some room for Tyler to grow, but I think having Tyler was like, yep. And when Tyler moves on. This guy might just fill right in as well. Pretty darn cool. All right, there you go. He is the fourth most intriguing Seahawks. And we'll finish this off over the course of this week, Wednesday, Thursday. And then on Friday, we'll give you the number one most intriguing Mm. Seahawks. Fun countdown. I enjoy this. This gives us a good chance to have these conversations about each of these guys who are going to play a role in determining what kind of a team we've got this year here in Seattle. Are you going to have to remake your top three after our Gino interview? No, I know three, two, and one. They are set in stone. Okay. Uh, I think I've got them pretty well locked, but, you know, everything is uh, everything is day-to-day until it actually occurs, that's for sure.